True love, you heard him? You could not ask for a more noble cause than that. True love is the greatest thing in the world. Except for a nice MLT, a mutton lettuce and tomato sandwich when the mutton is nice and lean and the tomato is ripe. They're so perky. I love that. But that's not what he said. He distinctly said, to blave. And as we all know, to blave means to bluff. Huh? So you're probably playing cards, and he cheated. Liar! That, that was uh, performed by the guitars for um, Dire Straits, fun fact. Welcome back to Life Lessons in Germany. Hello. And today we're going to be making sense of life through The Princess Bride. It follows Wesley, the farm boy, and Buttercup. They first are hanging out on a farm together, but then... Wesley proposes yeah. to Buttercup, but because he cannot afford he to afford marry her, yeah, he, goes he off. has to go off to yeah. find a means. Yeah, a means uh, to then marry her. Yeah. Make some... Green. So Wesley's gone for five years. After a while, Buttercup ends up getting opposed to. Well, not proposed to. Forced into a marriage yes. because Prince Humperdinck can choose whoever he wants. That's he right. Yeah, that's him. right. Law of the she land. She does not want to marry him. No. Yeah, the law of the it's land. A, it's a good law if you're if you're up top. Yeah. Yeah. If you're up top. <laughs> if you're up top, it's a good law. It works for you. Soon before the wedding, Buttercup's forced back riding. And then she gets it's, kidnapped. Gets kidnapped by people who've actually been hired yes. by Prince Humper Humperdinck. 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 Because he wants to actually start a war with another country. So yeah. this whole thing is just a ruse. Wesley, at this time we don't know who it is, is following them and ends up challenging each captor one-on-one, -on -one, defeats them all. <laughs> Rescues Buttercup. The prince has been looking for Buttercup this yeah. whole time. He finds them and then strikes a deal with the two of them. Yeah. I will release Wesley, take him to his ship, but then you have to come back with me and marry me. But Humperdinck is not to be trusted. <laughs> no. And what he actually does is give Wesley to the six-fingered man yes. for torture. Almost killed. Yeah. Mostly then, killed. He gets brought back to life by the Miracle Max with help from two of the old captors. They storm the castle, save Buttercup, and uh, right off the sunset mm -hmm. live happily ever after. Well, the main, main characters, characters are Wesley, Buttercup, Inigo Montoya, Fezzik, yeah. Fezzik and yeah. then Vecini. Prince, Prince Humperdinck and the six-fingered man who murdered Inigo's father. father. Two other characters are the son who's sick, the grandfather that comes to visit him. And that's about it, basically. That's pretty much it. Yeah. Let's go through uh, the, the kidnappers. Yeah. You've got Inigo Montoya. When I was strong enough, I dedicated my life to the study of fencing. So the next time we meet, I will not fail. I will go up to the six-fingered man and say, Hello. My name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. We've got Fezzik. You never say anything about killing anyone. I've hired you to help me start a war. It's a prestigious line of work with a long and glorious tradition. I just don't think it's right. Killing an innocent girl. This is this thing with Anigo and Fezzik. Is they're really doing the kidnapping just for money? Anigo, he was a drunkard, he's down and out, but he's an honorable person. They're not really kidnappers at heart. They have a lot of integrity. Wesley's supposed to be the enemy, but they're like, you know what? We're gonna fight fair. And I like that. Thank you. Well, wait, 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 wait until you're ready. Again, thank you. I did that on purpose. I don't have to miss. I believe you. So what happens now? We face each other as God intended. Sportsmanlike. No tricks, no weapons. Skill again, skill wrong. When you're competing with people, fair is good. What are you going to get out of it knowing that they never had a chance? So they're, they're good people. But it's tricky though. They're good people, but they do bad things. Mm -hmm. And yeah, someone could say, well, they're victims of circumstance, victims of their poverty and right. social prejudices. And I yeah. get that. But I'm like, at what point do you say, okay, Right. I am now faced with having to kidnap and murder someone. When does it end? It makes me think too of how you can find yourself in a position where you are just doing it to survive. Yeah. But you're still kind of in the system, in the, the position you're in. You're still trying to be as good as possible. If you find yourself in like a pyramid scheme or a sleazy uh, sales yeah, gig, operation. but you're still trying to like, when you're talking to people, you're like, 
let me give it to you straight when the boss isn't around. You're like, this is kind of the shtick. This yeah. is what the operation is. And you kind of reason with people when you're able to get away with it and able to be more real and kind to people when you yeah. can. So it's like you do the best you can in the mucky situation you find yourself in. And I think that's really fair. And it is really the mark of a good person. But at the same time, like, how long do you do that? What extent do we kind of let you off the hook? I guess you're allowed to redeem yourself. And I think they do. Once they're given another chance to rescue Buttercup after kidnapping her. Yeah, they redeem themselves indeed. But the issue I had here is that there was really a seeming lack of fighting for their lives. These two people are very unhappy with their employer. It kind of seemed like they accepted their fate a lot more than fighting for what they wanted. I can kind of understand it when you look at Fezzik. Fezzik is very insecure. He's insecure even though he is actually a smart guy. Mm -hmm. The riddles. Vicini, he can fuss. Fuss, fuss. Thing you like to scream at us. Probably he means no harm. He's very, very short on charm. You have a great gift for Ryan. Yes, yes. Some of the time. On top of that, he has a lot of physical strength. There are several issues here succumbing to your fate. You aren't happy about a situation, but you're sticking with it anyway. Yeah. Because, well, you know, I'm not really smart. What else am I going to do? Yeah. It depends on the context. It depends on the circumstances. But for me, in this situation where you're now like, it's a life of crime here. Yeah. Inigo and Fezzik both clearly uh, suffer from not having confidence in themselves. I'm good at sword fighting. You're good at being brute muscle, but that's it. They feel like, well, we need someone who's a strategist. That's why we need Vecini. So they kind of resign themselves to this one skill that they have. I see they're good people, mm -hmm. and there's a lot to be said for that. Then that brings us to Vecini. I can't compete with you physically, and you're no match for my brains. You're that smart. Let me put it this way. Have you ever heard of Plato, Aristotle? Socrates? Yes. Morons. He is so prideful. He thinks that there's no one that could outsmart him. So Vecini, the thing that makes him feel better is like, well, I'm not handsome or skilled like the sword yeah. fighter, and I'm not intimidating or strong or really formidable like the giant. As much as someone could be arrogant like that, you can really see their insecurities by the people they surround themselves with. Yeah. If you see someone who has a very high sense of superiority, and the people that he spends time with seem to be inferior, mm -hmm. I think that is a mark of the fact that that person is actually much more insecure than yeah. they seem. My friend is gonna have these issues yeah. because I wanna be the cutest, the best dressed, and so yeah. I'm gonna make friends with someone who isn't as desired as I am. So I don't actually have to change, but I can still feel a little less bad about myself. Yeah, and I want to be surrounded by people that are even more insecure than me because then they won't question me yeah. and they will succumb and yeah, feed the, my ego yeah, the, and reinforce my view of my superiority. There are a lot yeah, of relationships oh yeah. like that. Yeah, the, the kidnappers are very much, you see those relationships play out all the time with yeah. people. Never forget this! When I found you, you were so slobbering drunk you couldn't buy brandy! And you! Friendless. Brainless, helpless, hopeless. Do you want me to send you back to where you were? Unemployed in Greenland? The people that want to seem the best in their friend group, they also don't ever want to continue growing and improving. He has this concept of himself that he's very intelligent, very articulate, knows language, but then he even keeps using inconceivable, inconceivable. and then even an ego at one point is like, You keep using the word. I don't think it means what you think it means. And then he kind of wants to ignore it or brush it off because when someone in the group that is supposed to be inferior to him actually starts to question, question him. then there is no humbling of, okay, maybe the people that I think are my inferiors, maybe they have something to teach me. It's just, nope. No, there's no possible way that that gonna can shut happen. going to shut this down. Yeah. yeah, And because of that, he uh, gets bested. Two other characters are the son who's sick and then the grandfather. The kid would rather just play video games and all the stuff that he feels like reading even back then in the 80s was still kind of an old way of being entertained. The grandfather, knowing that I think the kid could get something out of this story. And so it goes from the kid being very uh, impatient and quick to get to the interesting parts. And then by the end, he's like on the edge of the bed. The eel doesn't get her. I'm explaining to you because you look nervous. I was nervous. Well, maybe I was a little bit concerned, but that's not the same thing. Because we can stop now if you want. No, you could read a little bit more if you want. I think it's maybe like the classic feeling that your grandfather, who's at first kind of annoying because he pinches your cheek and it feels like he doesn't really respect you or see you. So at first it's kind of set up like, oh, here's some out of date grandfather that's going to be annoying and isn't up with more interesting ways to be entertained or have fun or hang out. And the grandfather realizes that the kid is lacking some kind of general experience, knows this would be good for him. Hey, 
How is this city? Huh? I think I'll leave you two pals alone. I brought you a special present. What is it? Open it up. A book? Speaking of it, I do like that relationship because it reminds me of how people always go on about, oh, you know, you maybe you just don't get along because of the age gap. Thing, yeah. yeah, it's a generational gap. I think people who say that, I don't know. Maybe Not they a don't have a sense of the human condition. Yeah, honestly, the interesting thing is a lot of people who say that are older people. Yeah. Which tells me that just because you're getting older does not mean you're getting wiser or mm -hmm. smarter. I like that relationship because yeah, you can get along with someone 50 years older than mm -hmm. you. And if a person is actually growing, they're gonna be able to connect with you based on your stage in life. I think if you've had enough life experience, you understand that just because someone is 10, they may actually have more life experience than a regular 10 year old. Mm -hmm. And it's up to you to have a conversation to determine and yeah, adjust. Where they're at. Yeah, where they're at, which yeah. the grandfather does do. He does have that patience. He mm -hmm. just gently says, you know, back in my day, I mm -hmm. used to do that. Not this kid is not going to get it. I'm giving yeah. up. Kids these days. Which is yeah. another thing with older people who have that whole narrative mm -hmm. of generational gaps. They always just talk to you as well in that very condescending or reprimanding kind of way. Yeah. Oh, you guys, you're always on your phones, video games or yeah, whatever. Out of touch. Out of touch yeah, with. They don't appreciate yeah. what you should. And I'm like, I mean, you're already coming from a critical place. Why mm -hmm. would I even want to interact yeah. with you? I do not believe in generational gaps mm -hmm. as a source of disconnect between two people. I don't believe in any of those gaps. Generational gap, a culture gap, regional <laughs> location yeah. gap. Hey, I'll never see you again. Of course you will. But what if something happens to you? Hear this now. I will always come for you. But how can you be sure? This is true love. I think this happens every day. Let's get let's go. Yes. I remember a friend of mine who said to me, you work hard for relationships. There is no soulmate. Basically her argument was that you could meet anyone and get into a relationship with them and it, it would work if you make it work. And you know what? I think you kind of missed the point. Even if someone refers to another as their soulmate, it's not like we're now just sitting and every single day it's this kumbaya vibes. Mm -hmm. Any relationship, soulmate or not, you still gotta make it work. You gotta make it work. There are fights, you mm -hmm. fight with your soulmate and you have to be willing to fight with your soulmate because if you don't fight, you're never gonna resolve things. Mm -hmm. I think this kind of made me think about that. Right. The idea of the right person yeah. because yeah. Both of them are so committed to each yeah. other. They do not believe that they're going to find anyone else. Yeah. Buttercup believes that Wesley's dead and she's like, I will never love again. Yeah. I will never find another love. Yeah. And I believe that there are people that have connected with someone in that way. You just have never felt as free or as safe or as happy, as cocooned, all the, mm -hmm. the love stuff mm -hmm. as you did with that person. And so I do understand that when you do get there, I think you get to that point of feeling like this is it. most likely. This is it. It's I so know. unlikely. There's yeah. no way I could find anybody else like yeah. that. You should bless me for destroying him before he found out what you really are. And what am I? Faithfulness he talked of, madam, your enduring faithfulness. Now tell me truly, when you found out he was gone, did you get engaged to your prince that same hour, or did you wait a whole week out of respect for the dead? You mocked me once, never do it again! I died that day! Wesley thinks that Buttercup moved on very quickly, so he was hurt initially, yeah. but then Buttercup's like, no, I died that day, and I was never in love again. It's mm -hmm. just I got snatched up because the state has power over me. What am I going to do? But it never actually changed for her. They both knew then, and then when they were able to reconnect, you know, it's like nothing was different. It's heartbreaking that now the person's not in your life, but sometimes there are people who could say, well, I had that, I enjoyed it. Your soul cup has been filled. Your soul cup has been filled. And once it's and filled, then it doesn't really deplete. In my mind, Wesley fights much more for this love than Buttercup. She thought that he was dead, so I get it. Mm -hmm. But then she finds out that no, he's actually yeah. alive. Yeah. And yet she's waiting yeah. to be saved all the yeah. time. The only little, you know, yeah. uh, fight she puts up is I'm gonna kill myself, a threat to yeah. take yeah. her life. If you tell me I must marry you in 10 days, please believe I will be dead by morning. I guess her fight could be, one would say, well, you got a prince. Okay, the guy died. You're never gonna have to right. work again. Right. You don't have to be- You're to good. You're good for yeah. life. You're set. Yeah. And she still was like, I don't care about the money. I don't yeah. care about the fame. The easy life, yeah. the prestige, I don't want it. I'm quite happy to have a simple life out mm -hmm. in the country mm -hmm. with the person that I love. So that's a commitment. Yeah. That is someone so with a conscience where she has nightmares of old crones seeing through her. True love. Saved her in the fire swamp and she treated it like garbage. And that's what she is, the queen of refuse. 
So bow down to her if you want. Bow to her. Bow to the queen of slime, the queen of filth, the queen of putrescence. Boo! Boo! Rubbish, filth, slime, muck. Boo! 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 Clearly, her conscience is bothering her. Like, you don't want this life at all. None of this means anything to you. Exactly, me. that's true. Yeah. Yeah, and so maybe it's... Just... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, she's fighting. Yeah, her uh, subconscious yeah. is fighting. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Wesley is committed. He's trying to make a life for himself mm -hmm. to make sure that he is eventually able to marry the person he loves, ends up falling prey to the dread pirate mm -hmm. Roberts and... Works under him for years. Yeah. Finally, Roberts decided something. He said, all right, Wesley. Never had a valet. I can try it tonight. I'm most likely to kill you in the morning. Three years he said that. Good night, Wesley. Good work. Sleep well. I'm most likely to kill you in the morning. It was a fine time for me. I was learning to fence, fight, anything anyone would teach me. And Roberts and I eventually became friends. That's tough. That's, That's a lot. Yeah. That's commitment. Yeah. yeah. And then finds out that, oh, wait. She's been kidnapped. Mm -hmm. I have to go and mm -hmm. find her. Yeah. Even though he thought she had betrayed their love. Yeah. That day she was amazed to discover that when he was saying as you wish, what he meant was, I love you. And even more amazing was the day she realized she truly loved him back. Someone would say, well, it's because it's the only other people in their life, but it's like, no, for true love you do, you will do what it takes because when you feel like you have that, it really is the most important thing. And so you'll fight Till your last, really. Hello! My name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die! Now! Offer me money. Yes. Power to promise me that. All that I have and more. Please. Offer me everything I ask for. Anything you want. I want my father back, you son of a bitch. Oh. Also gives you a lot of courage and strength. Inigo, even as he's fighting the six-fingered man, he's yeah. injured beyond belief, yeah. and yet his love for his dad yeah. keeps him going. Keeps him going. Yeah. Wesley had no money for marriage, so he packed his few belongings and left the farm to seek his fortune across the sea. It kind of reminds me of work on yourself, make yourself the person that would be ready yeah. for your true love. First of all, he feels like, okay, hey, I'm not quite there yet to give my true love the life that I believe she deserves or I want for her or I want for us. Goes out willing to like piracy, all this kind of stuff. And then also does things like slowly over years builds up an immunity to poison. All these things to make him able to be there for her. Work on yourself every day to be the right Get the relationship. Yeah, to be able to actually, for the relationship to work, you really do need to keep working on yourself to make whatever relationships you end up in worth it. Romantic and platonic relationships. Always having to look at, okay, what am I doing to contribute positively? Or what am I doing to contribute negatively? negatively and what do I need to change or want to change or what does my partner need me to change mm -hmm. or do more of? You see, I cannot find him. It's been 20 years now I started to lose confidence. I just work for Ficina to pay the bills. It's not a lot of money in revenge. Inigo's purpose his entire life was to get revenge on the murderer of his father. The grandfather says that yeah. life isn't fair. Yeah. Revenge isn't always sweet and yeah. it's it's messy. He's offering all these things, money, power, mm -hmm. etc. But you were like, well, you know, all these things don't matter. I just want my dad back. Yeah. yeah, okay, you ended up avenging your dad, but he's still gone. Yeah, you're still not going to get it back. The problem with revenge is really it puts a cap on so many things. Yeah. This guy is literally seething with resentment yeah. and anger. So Understandably, he's not, he's not living. Yeah, what does it really do? And this movie is probably one of the most satisfying when the revenge finally happens. In the end, though, he finds himself like, okay, well, what has my life been? Now what do I do? You know, it's very strange. I have been in the revenge business so long. Now that it's over, I don't know what to do with the rest of my life. I think the true justice is always within yourself. Never about the other person who caused you some kind of disservice. Maybe if someone wronged you, instead of trying to get back at the person, you look at how come I found myself in that situation? What was it that happened that led me to being used, exploited, or hurt in this way? And how could I change it? Was there something that I missed? What could I do in future to avoid yeah. getting myself in this kind of situation where I get hurt in this way? I think that is justice to me. Yeah. How do I overcome it and let it go. Now, in this case, I'm happy Inigo got revenge. I think that's where it's a little different because normally you'd be like, it's you know what? Your whole life being <laughs> ruined is not actually going to equal killing this person because mm -hmm. he still kind of wins by the 
fact that your whole life was about this. You must be that little Spanish brat I taught a lesson to all those years ago. Simply incredible. If you've been chasing me your whole life only to fail now, I think that's the worst thing I've ever heard. And it would have been even more sad if he had just, he wouldn't have been able to get revenge. Yeah. But that can happen a lot of times. A lot of times people are so focused on that and then at the end, don't even get revenge, you know? So what was it all for? But uh, yeah, that's some stuff that we thought about Princess Bride. Mm -hmm. What'd you guys think? Let us know in the comments down below. Share your thoughts, please, on our thoughts. What is justice? What is true love? What is true love to you guys? Let us know. Till next time, thanks for watching. Thanks for it. Peace. What are the three terrors of the fire swamp? One, the flames burn. No problem. There's a popping sound proceeding each, we can avoid that. Two, the lightning sand, which you were clever enough to discover what that looks like, so in the future we can avoid that too. Firstly, what about the ROUSs? Rodents of unusual size? I don't think they exist. Oh!